We have Richard who wrote in. He said, what kind of 4 by plywood is best to help reinforce a structural beam consisting of three links of two foot by 10 inch, two by 10s, 15 feet long? So he's going to have three layers of two by 10s running for 15 feet, and he wants to reinforce it with plywood. Okay, so let's just take a look at the details of uh, a built up beam. If you look here, this is basically what he's doing is a two by 10 and he's doing three of them together. And this actually comes out of a uh, technical book about uh, span tables and everything. Interesting details here. Look at the nailing pattern. Very lots of nails. Uh, often we scatter them a little bit more than this, uh, but typical is uh, moving along every 18 inches. Notice the nails have to go like all the way through two of these and just right up to the next one. You can't get much longer than that or the nails are so big they'll start splitting the wood. So you actually do sandwich the out one to the center one and the other one to the center one as you go through. And it's a, the bearing has to be for the full width of the beam. So you go all the way across and the mem minimum bearing on the end is three and a half inches. OK, but in respect to the question that we got here, let me see if I can push the button right here we go. What Richard wanted to know was how the plywood. He wants to sandwich plywood down the middle of this. Well, the detail is, first of all, if you're going to add plywood to a sandwich beam, you put it between two pieces of regular wood. So we would do it two plywoods like this and make this whole thing a lot stronger. Uh, putting the plywood on the outside doesn't do nearly as much good. On the inside, it's sandwiched in and really being held. Add some glue, it goes even further to make that work. So that's the first thing is that you want to add it in there. Now, what kind of plywood he asks? Waterproof. We always want to use waterproof, even if it's indoors, because we don't want even a plumbing spill to start to create a problem of the glue letting go. And waterproof is just ordinary exterior plywood. And you can use any thickness you want. Uh, the course, the, if it's a quarter, half, three quarters of an inch, it gets much, much stronger as you go along. So those are fairly simple answers, but it doesn't really deal with the right question. Because trying to build, what he really wanted to do was remove one telepost and replace a steel beam with his built up stronger than steel beam. But how do you really know how strong that beam is? Well, there's a thing called the span tables. And this is like a big official book about uh, uh, the spans. And if you take a look at it over here, uh, this is from the Canadian Wood Council that puts this out. And it's the official span table book. And here, for instance, is the table for built up floor beams. Uh, this is for supporting one floor in a house. And then there's all these figures. In fact, it goes forever. That's the official book to do this. The problem is nowhere in all those pages do they talk about how much strength you get with a piece of plywood added in. That becomes a different game, and they haven't built that into the span tables. And so you're kind of stuck with where are we going to go to get the information. It boils down, you need a structural engineer to look at this, okay? And the structural engineer is able to tell you exactly how much a support you need to carry what's up above. And so you can describe the whole house, the way it's built, and then they can really tell you what it takes to replace that steel beam. But even if we do that, you know, it, it's well, before we get to the next problem, because his problem's not solved with just making a big, strong hunk of wood to go across there. But before we leave this, I want to take a look at um, deck span tables, because deck span tables can be uh, very useful. Uh, here's the house span tables. It's a book and you have to buy it. Now, the deck span tables, actually, we have access to two of them for deck span tables. <clears throat> One that was put together by myself in 2000. When did I do that? 2008. And in 2008, I realized there was no 
deck span table any place. There was span table for the house, but not for this thing that's outside the house and has a different set of weight requirements, has to take snow load, but it can be a little sloppier than the house. It's not a critical structure and uh, these kind of things. So I dug through all kinds of references and finally built a span table uh, that could help out. And you can actually get that span table uh, the whole pamphlet here, if you go down to my website, is a pamphlet, or I put it into an interactive Excel spreadsheet. The Canadian Wood Council in 2016 finally brought out the official span table. And uh, so the official one, and they have it right here for free on their website. So you can get in and you can actually from the Canadian Wood Council, and all these links are down in that link thing. This is the book, 17 pages long, that goes through and gives you all the details. Let's see if we can get down to the interesting part here. It shows you the layouts of decks so you can understand them, cantilevers, and then it'll get into all those tables to tell you exactly how to put that together. Okay? So that'll help you. You don't have to get the household official span table. It's free of charge for decks. It's worth checking that out. Mine is simpler to use. We've checked them over and they work pretty close to the same numbers, even though I did it eight years earlier. Okay, but you can have the proper beam that won't bend because you made it really strong. But the question remains, will the house still be held up? Because the question is, what do you put that beam on? And that's where we could get into some real problems. If we want to go back to my own website here and take a look up an article I have, can I move or move or remove support poles in the basement? And this drawing here, I have a better copy of it over here we can take a look at. Now that's a bit fuzzy, but it allows us to see it a bit bigger here. Um, what is really important over here is that I can have this beam down in the bottom, but this post has to be strong enough to hold it up or the wall that you're sitting the beam on and the foot under it, or if the beam is sitting on a wall, the footing under the wall has to support all of that. While you say, I'm just taking the beam out and putting a stronger one in, why doesn't that work? Well, the first one was supported by one more telepost, the telepost you wanted to remove or maybe even two teleposts you wanted to remove. So originally, there was weight here, and weight here, and weight here. Now, sure, we can make the beam strong, but we're taking all the weight out to the two points on the end. And that may just shove into the ground if it's not built right. And so it comes back to the thing that we really have to look at what we're supporting. If we look at a house, it's important to understand that what we're supporting with a beam in the basement is the floor. That's not too bad. The wall up here, maybe a second floor and wall, then all these joists up in the attic, then the roof itself, and people usually think about it, snow load, that's a problem. So how heavy is the snow? By the way, Montreal has the heaviest snow loads in all of Canada. We may not have the highest snow load, but it's heavier than elsewhere because our humidity is high in the winter. So snow loads become an important part, and the Quebec requirements for roofs are not the same as Ontario because of the snow load. Then the other aspect you have to consider is wind load. And when you get to Newfoundland, the wind load is worse than the snow load. So if you have a really strong Northwesterner blowing on a heavy snow-covered roof, and you've taken a beam out of the basement, things could go wrong, okay? Here's the key to do it. Here's how you pull this all together. Is you hire a structural engineer. It's not that expensive. We're not asking the contractor to do this whole job. I like to have a structural engineer come in, look at the house, give me the specifications. Okay, if you make this beam and you put it over here, you may have to reinforce the one wall because it's not strong enough, or it's fine. You can just do it that way. You get those instructions written from a registered engineer, then you ask for bids for anybody to do it, or you do it yourself, but you know now that you don't just have a handyman or a small contractor who says, I can do that, and then he ends up giving us trouble, okay? 
back in the days when we had the uh, the ice, the the, the whole uh, ice problem in Quebec and northeastern United States, uh, that wiped out a number of houses. The only houses that were damaged were ones that had supports removed improperly. No other house actually fell in. We had shopping centers fall in, but the houses didn't fall in. The ones that fell in, somebody had opened up two rooms and not done the proper support between them. So make sure you get some good engineering on that. You can still do it yourself, but make sure you do it to somebody's specs. Thank you.